Before moving on, I want to address problem 180 again. Because we got it right in the last video, but then as soon as I finished the video, I realized there was a much, much simpler way of doing that. They said in a nationwide poll, n people were interviewed. One fourth of them answered yes. One fourth answered yes to question one. And of those, one third answered yes to question two. So then you have another one third. So how many people, what fraction of the entire population said yes to both? Well, it would be one fourth of one th or one third of one fourth, which is equal to one third of one fourth, which is equal to one twelfth. One twelfth of the population said yes to both, or you could say one twelfth of n said yes to both, and they just and they ask us which of the following expressions represents the number of people interviewed who did not answer yes to both. So it's everybody else. This these are the people who said yes to both. So we essentially, just subtract that from one. So one minus one twelfth is equal to twelve twelfths minus one twelfth, which is equal to eleven twelfths of the population did not say yes to both. And so 11 twelfths, and then the population is n, so it's 11n over 12. And that's, that's how we got choice e. Problem 181. The ratio of two quantities is 3 to 4. So let's say quantity 1 is x, 1 is y, and it equals 3 to 4. If each of the quantities is increased by 5, what is the ratio of these new quantities? x plus 5, x plus 5 to y plus 5. Well, it, it really depends on what multiple these are of 3 and 4. I mean, I could, and right, and right. Well, I already have a sense that it's choice E. It cannot be determined from the information given. And let's, let's prove it. Let's, I'm going to show you two different x's and y's. And when you add 5 to both, you're going to get a completely different answer. So you cannot determine it from the, from the information. So they, they snuck in a data sufficiency question into the problem solving. So one, you know, x could be 3 if x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 4. That definitely satisfies this condition. Or we could have x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 8. right? That also satisfies a 3 to 4 ratio. But what happens when we add 5 to both of these? x plus 5, x plus 5 would be equal to 8. And y plus 5 would be equal to 9. So the new ratio becomes 8 to 9. But what, in this, what about this case? You would have x plus 5 is equal to 6 plus 5, which is 11. And then y plus 5 is equal to 8 plus 5, which is 13. And 8 ninths is a very different fraction than 11 thirteenths. It's not like you can reduce one into the other. So I can find an x and a y that satisfy this, but when I add 5 to the top and bottom, I get two different answers. So you cannot determine this with the information given. So the choice is E, sneaky data sufficiency problem. 182. 182. If the average arithmetic mean of x and y is 60, and the average, so essentially you're saying x plus y over 2 is equal to 60. That's the average of them is 60. And the average of y and z is 80. So y plus z over 2 is equal to 80. What is the value of z minus x. So let's see if we can do that. So let's let's rewrite this. Let's solve for let's solve for x in terms of y. So we get under a different color. We get x plus y is equal to 120. Just multiplied both sides by 2. You get x is equal to 120 minus y. And let's solve for z in terms of y here. Multiply both sides by 2, you get y plus z is equal to 160. Z is equal to 160 minus y. So what's z minus x? So z is 160 minus y, 160 minus y, minus x, 120 minus y, 120 minus y. So that is equal to, let's see, 160 minus y, minus 120, plus y. And it's good that the y's are canceling out. Whenever they give you something like this, you can almost, it's, it's usually a safe guess that if you just go forth with the algebra, that nice things will happen like this. So these y's cancel out, and we're left with 160 minus 120, which is 40. And that is choice B. Problem 183. 183. If one half of the air in a tank is removed, 
with each stroke of a vacuum pump. So we have one half tank per stroke. I'm guessing this is going to be a rate of change. What fraction of the original amount of air has been removed after four strokes? Oh no, this is interesting. OK. So after one stroke, so what fraction of the original amount of air has been removed? So let's just figure out how much has been left, right? So left, we could do both actually, left and then removed. So after one stroke, one half of the air in the tank is removed with each stroke. Right, so after one stroke, you have one half left, and you had one half removed, right? Then after two strokes, it takes out half of the air, right? So it takes out a half of this half. So it takes it. So if you take out a half of this half, you have a fourth left over, and you've also removed another fourth, right? Because these add up to what was left before. After three strokes, you take out half of this, so you have an eighth left over, and you took out another eighth. And then after four strokes, you have a sixteenth of the air left over. Actually, I didn't even have to do this column. After four strokes, you have a sixteenth of the original air, right? But they, they want to know what fraction of the original amount of air has been removed. So this is what you have left. So what's been removed is 1 minus this. So 1 minus 1 sixteenth. Well, that's 16 over 16 minus 1 over 16. It's equal to 15 over 16. Choice A. I didn't even have to do worry about that column. Problem 184. If the two-digit integers m and n, if the two-digit integers m and n are positive and have the same digits, but in reverse order, which of the following cannot be the sum of m and n? All right, same digits, reverse order. So m could be a, b, and n could be b, a. And so which cannot be the sum? So let's just, I'm just experimenting. Let's see what if you add a, b, and b, a. a, b, and b, a. So if b plus, let's see, if b plus a, I guess there's two assumptions. If b plus a is less than 10, let's, let's do this one. b plus a is less than 10 then you would have this digit would be b plus a. And then this digit over here would also be b plus a. Right? So definitely choices d and e work. So we're left with choices a, b, and c, because none of these fit this paradigm, right, where we have the same digit twice. So all of those assume that, the, the, that b plus a is greater than 10. So if, if b plus a is greater than 10, then what happens? a plus b, b plus a. So essentially, let's think about it a little bit. If b plus a, you'll have the, you'll have the ones digit, ones digit from, from b plus a, and then you'll have a one up here, and you'd add one plus a plus b. So you'd have b plus a plus one. Right? And so this will be a two digit number. And if you think about it, it's the so if, if we if you do the three digits of the number, right? If we do the three digits of the number, this is going to be the ones digit from B plus A, right? This is going to be the ones digit from B plus A plus one. So this number is going to be one more than this number. That's an interesting problem. This one has to be one more than that one. And so both B and C satisfy that, right? 165. 6 is 1 more than 5. And it should work out. You, we, should, we should be able to figure out a B and an A that satisfy that. And then C also satisfies that. 121. 2 is 1 more than 1. And I, I wanted to make sure you understand it, because this is actually pretty interesting. You know, by deductive reasoning, A is the answer. But if you think about it, B, we're assuming B plus A is greater than 0. So here, you'd have the 1's digit of B plus A, and you'd carry a 1. Now when you add a plus b and that 1, the 1's digit is going to be 1 greater. This is going to be the 1's digit of b plus a plus 1. And that's why I'm saying that the 10's digit has to be 1 greater than the 1's. That was an interesting problem. Anyway.